So what I'm going to talk about uh, today is uh, to do with note finding on the guitar. Now a lot of what you play on, on a guitar, in, in some respects you don't have to worry about the notes, um, particularly because a lot of the time we're playing in patterns. So um, if I can do this, then I can do this, or this. So a lot of the time we're thinking in patterns, but um, it is nonetheless useful to know where your notes are, and it's something which a lot of people find very, very difficult um, to, to uh, grasp, really. And I think a lot of that is about the approach. In fact, it's all about the approach, really. If you see a, you know, a fretboard diagram, it's got masses of stuff on it. It, it. You know, it's too much to take in, really. It's too much, almost too much detail, if you will. So I'm going to see if I can introduce you to a, a relatively straightforward way of, of finding your notes. Um, this certainly worked well for me and saved me, I think, a lot of aggravation. So, first and foremost, um, there's a little bit of knowledge of uh, chords. In fact, our, our bar chords, although our open chords would do just as well, it's arguable if you're worrying about what notes are up here, you will have played some bar chords, I think. But let's presume just for a second that you don't. Here's a chord of E. Okay, now, within that chord, we have an octave. This note's E. distance between them. We've gone across two strings from our sixth string to our fourth string and we've gone up two frets. Now since all octaves are the same distance this means we can transfer that piece of knowledge. If we know that this is E then we know this is E this is G, this must be G. And if this is A, this must be A as well. And so on and so forth. And now we're back to E again. So of course the next starts again at the twelfth fret. So we the bit we really need to learn is this because we can transfer it up to there. So that gives us our E's. Now, if you're already playing bar chords, you'll be familiar with where to play G, A, B, C, D. Now, you'll notice I've said G, A, B, C, D, because if we know where those are, we know where the ones in between are. So we don't want to be carrying too much information around with us. You know, if we can find where G is, we know where G flat's going to be, and so on and so forth. But more about that thinking, I think, in another video. So that gives us our notes on our 6th string and our 4th string. Okay, well that's a third of all the notes that are on a guitar, straight away. Okay, now talking about octaves, we have another, well, two octave gap, but nonetheless, it's an E again, isn't it? So if this is E and this is E, then this is G and this is G. Now we could do that across all the frets very easily, although we could do it the other way around and say, well, this is G, so this is G, so this is G. We'll do a James Taylor. Same idea. is we now can locate half of all the notes on the guitar very easily okay 
Now we're going to move on to the fifth string. Now the fifth string happens to be the, the root note of our A-shaped chords. I've got quite fat fingers, so I'm just squeezing two fingers in. I could just about go through there, I suppose, but it's easier for me to do that with two fingers. Okay. Within that A-shape, we have a root note of A, but we also have an octave of A again here. And again, it's that two-string gap, fifth string, third string, and two frets high. So wherever I do that, okay, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and back to A again. This is really good news because this means we've now got five sixths of all the notes on a guitar straight under our fingers and all we really have to know is an E chord and an A chord. Now whether we're playing that E chord here and the A chord here or whether we're playing it here and here, it's the same thing. So that's really, really important and as I said, very useful. So they're all what I would call one stage pieces of information. Because you know this string is whatever it is, you know that string is. That's one thing you've got to do. Now, this is the only two-stage piece of information that you need to complete your knowledge of all six strings and where all the notes are. But it's not difficult. Okay, we've got E here, as we said earlier. We've got another E here on our fourth string. And we've got another one here on our second string. So here we've got a slightly bigger gap. You'll see that it's now three frets higher, and it's again two strings away. E, F, G, A, B, C, D. Yourself, well, it's all very well for me to sit here and say all this stuff and say how easy it is. Well, it's easier than almost any other way you could possibly approach it that I know of. In fact, it is the easiest way. I know. Why would I? Why would I be telling you anything else? Okay. Um, the real question is how you remember it. So, the thing to do is to take a, a riff or a tune that you know pretty well, and then try and play it in octaves. So, let's take a very simple tune. Let's take Three Blind Mice. Okay. Okay. So we take that three blind mice. What do, what did I do before? Play it a little bit higher. So I'm taking it down now. I'm starting. It doesn't really matter, but I'm starting with an F sharp. So. enough for us isn't it okay so that's note finding it's not difficult to do but you need to just be organized and use your chord knowledge now just as a final final note um, it's really important not to put this kind of uh, fence between your chord knowledge and your knowledge of single notes because the two things are inextricably linked and you're only ever going to make your life more difficult if you think of them as being separate. So that's note finding. Um, any questions, by all means, send them to me. Um, and please, uh, if you get a chance, just click that subscribe button. And uh, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.